So we have three reasons to be really excited today. Number one, great weather after a really cold week. Number two, we have just moved into a new apartment near Seoul Station and we know a lot of really good restaurants here. And number three, today we are having Gamjatang for lunch. Yeah, that's really exciting. And it's at least 10 degrees warmer, so let's walk mm -hmm. on over to our restaurant let's and go. fill our faces with Korean food. We are both super excited about this dish because it's one of our favorite soups. It is so, so good. Yeah, this Korean soup slash stew is one of the most hearty ones you can have in all of Korea. So excited to be here. So if we take a look down here, I'm going to explain a bit what's in this dish. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the gamjatang is a pork spine stew. Yeah. It also has potatoes, it has perla leaves, it has ground sesame, and it has a bunch of other vegetable ingredients as yeah. well. And it also has glass noodles that are already in there. But we that ordered, was not enough for Sam. No, we ordered a special supplement of ramyun, which we're gonna pour in a little bit later. Uh, we wanna wait for it to cook a bit longer before we add that. But yeah, it, it's such a nice Korean stew. And if you can believe this, if you look down here one more time, this is actually the small version the of small this. small size. Yeah, you can know. get also get a medium and large. And that would that would make most sense if you were with a group of like maybe say three Friends, to four yeah, a group of three to four people, fans, family. So we're going with the smaller portion, which actually isn't very small. have come and turned down the fire so we <laughs> think it's ready we let yeah. it cook for about 10 minutes it's, it's, just it's still boiling. bubbling up a storm though yeah like, that is some serious Ooh. bubble check that some out serious action there so i'm gonna steam. dish it up look and at all that steam my gosh the pork spine and let's add the ramyeon noodles which sam was really craving yeah when that was that was a must addition for me oh my i mean when when it's only 2001 extra to add it, why not, right? There you go. Some broth. You've already got a perilla leaf in there. You've got there yourself you go. a nice big portion. Oh, that's for me. That's for you. Oh my. Yeah, there you go. Lucky me. And you're going to serve up yours as well? Yes. I'm going to claim this potato for myself. Yeah. So what's cool about this dish is that it dates back to the Three Kingdom period of Korea, which was a very long time ago. And it's from Jola province, Jola Namdo province, if I'm correct. So that's really cool. And I think we're ready to eat it soon. Yeah, enough information, let's dig in. All right, so now comes the dissection process. So I'm gonna use my chopsticks to pick off the meat off of the, the pork spine. Yeah. And the meat has been cooking for a really long time, so it's like super soft and tender. And just so you know, we have a special bowl here that we put the bones eventually. Yeah. But we're not we're not quite at that stage yet. Yeah. So we're still at the stage of eating the meat. Yeah. So this dish, like, you really have to work for it to enjoy it. It's quite a bit of work to get at the meat, but it's so tender and it just falls apart. So I really enjoy it. I'm really excited for this. You gotta you gotta have some you gotta admire a dish where you have to, to do a little bit of the work yourself. Let's see. Well, let's try that. How is it? Oh my gosh. The meat like melts in your mouth. It is so so tender. So and tender. Is the is the broth of the soup spicy? Yeah, it's one of the spicier it, broths. It I've kind had. of looks like a bit like it has a goat jung burst, like a red pepper yeah, taste. Yeah, yeah. And we have a bit of this. If I remember correctly, this should be kind of like a. a mustard it's kind of a sauce. mustard, like a green mustard. Let's see. Take that a bit of a meat, put it in there. Mm. Gives it a bit of a kick. Oh my gosh, you're gonna love this. This is so good. <laughs> I'm loving it. Yeah. So before I try my gum to tongue, the first thing I want to point out is that we made a really big mistake the first time we ever had this. So in order for me to talk about it, you've got to look down here. Okay. So the worst thing you can do when you're having gum to tongue is just to let it sit. 
because while it's cooking, it can get really sticky at the bottom. So it's really important to keep moving it around to keep things floating. You can see over here, I've got a big potato. Yeah. And so it's important to keep the ingredients moving around. And we've also turned down the heat to just let it simmer. Yes. Very key point. So putting the ladle down, I'm gonna try my first bite. I'm gonna go in for the noodle since you had yeah. the meat already. <laughs> I'm gonna try to have some. Of, I'm gonna have, see if I can grab a little bit of meat over here. Oh, that's big, it's mostly bone. Yeah. Okay, there's a little bit of meat. I'm getting, I think, a perilla leaf, and I'm getting some noodles. A little yeah. bit so of everything. Let's there try that. Well, oh yeah, it's really good. Your first bite of gamja tang in how many years? <laughs> it's been the last time I had this was in was in Yongin, where you used to live. My neighborhood. That yeah. was like three or four years ago. That's, yeah. that, no, it was four years ago. That's uh -huh. ridiculous. How long it's been. So nice to be having this again. And I love, like you said, I love how tender the meat is. I love how spicy it is. And the noodles as a supplement were a really nice addition. Yeah, and we can actually add different supplements. Like if you want yeah. dumplings, there was mandu, or rice cakes. there was different, there was dok, which is the rice cakes. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of different ones you can choose from. We decided just to go for one to yeah. try to keep it more classic, but yeah. you can go nuts if you want. So I'm having my second serving over here. Ooh la la. And if you take a look at my little dish, you can see that I've got a, a big potato this time around. Yeah. And what's fascinating about this dish is gamja tang, if you take it literally, gamja means potato. But actually, that is not the main ingredient of the soup. Potato is more of an optional thing. Mm -hmm. What is the main ingredient is the Korean pork spine. Yeah. So that's really important point to point out because first time like four years ago we made a video about this dish and we were saying oh yeah it's a potato soup it's a potato stew a korean potato stew but actually that's incorrect it's korean pork spine stew yeah. and often it does have potatoes but it can also not have potatoes as well so now that we've made a big deal about the potatoes let's try that <laughs> some of the broth it's still really hot so i'm blowing on it Yeah, potato is a really nice addition. And another interesting thing about this dish is that everyone kind of has their own method to getting at the meat. Some yeah. people like pick at it a little bit and then have a little bite here and there. Others like to work through the bone and yeah. get it all out at once. I have to say there's not a ton of meat on the bone. There's a yeah. little bit. So to get to scrape that meat off, it does require quite a bit of work yeah. with your spoon and chopsticks. Well, we sure took care of that. Nothing but... Bowl. Empty bowl and, and just lots of, bones. lots of bones. So, yeah, that was like a super filling meal. We're leaving stuff. You know what? Our noses are running a bit because we are used to Korean spices, but this is especially Extra spicy. spicy. So. Actually, your lips look swollen right now. My lips are on fire. At the <laughs> so, anyways, on the price point. So, if you take a look here, you can see that the gamja tang it came to twenty thousand won. And then we have a supplement of rice for 1,000 and a supplement of mandu for 2,000 more. So in total, 23,000 won, iman samsung won, which is roughly a little bit less than 20 US dollars. So you're looking at like less than $10 a person. And when you come and have a Korean soup and stew that's as good, it's definitely worth it. So it is one of the must try Korean foods we recommend when visiting Seoul. And what's even better, this place is open 24 hours. Yeah, exactly. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned because we have more Korea food videos and travel videos coming out every Monday. Today's lunch, we are having kimchi bokumbap, which is a fried rice made with spicy fermented cabbage. We have ordered two varieties, and that is being made at the moment. You can probably hear all the noise in the kitchen. So I have to say, this is my absolute favorite Korean fried rice. I mean, kimchi tastes fantastic on its own, but there's just something special about it when it's fried and mixed in with rice and oil and all these other ingredients. And the cool thing about kimchi bokumbap is it doesn't just come in one variety. We're getting two different kinds. We're getting a special kind for you, which is called chamchi kimchi bokumbap, mm -hmm. which is kimchi fried rice made with tuna. Yeah. And I'm getting cholpan chiji kimchi bokumbap, which is... Oh, wow, here it is. Oh, yeah, which is here. 
from something up, <laughs> which is right here. <laughs> and it comes basically, it's kimchi, bokumbap. It comes in like a stone pot, yeah. and then on top of it, you have melted cheese. Lots of cheese, wonderful. Officially, this is called Chopan Cheese Kimchi Bokumbap. And <laughs> that means. Can you decipher that for us? So, the Chopan is kind of like, I, I believe it's the stone pot. Uh -huh. The cheese is obviously the cheese. the cheese. And the Kimchi Bokumbap is obviously the star of the meal here, the Kimchi Fried Rice. So, we're all set, let's dig in. So, my meal has also arrived, and I'm having the Chamchi Kimchi Bokumbap. So, if you take a look down here, you've got your spicy rice with the fermented cabbage. We also have the chamchi, which is the tuna, and it comes with little bits of seaweed and fried egg on top. Oh. That's kind of runny, so you basically just break it break and mix open. it all in together. Break that egg open. This is really good. Wow. Sometimes I eat this for breakfast, but today it's my lunch. I know when we first came back to Korea, we had this at like, what, 2.30 in the morning? It's yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> and that's the fascinating thing about eateries in Korea. They are open 24 hours. Yeah, especially these gimbap places. They're yeah. open 24 hours and you can come in any time of day and order anything you want. Mm -hmm. Gotta love that about Korea. So going in for a first bite here. Mm. That's nice. It's just like such a hearty filling meal, you know. It's mostly rice in this dish, but it's nice and spicy. So simple flavors, but it's good. It all works together. Mm. And yours is looking ooey and gooey with all that cheese yeah, on top. Look at, look at all that cheese. Look at that stretch Ooh. like that. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to like parse it off here. And Sam's a huge fan of pizza, so putting putting cheese on rice is just just perfect. <laughs> mm. What do you think? That is amazing. The best part about it, aside from the kimchi bokumbap, is obviously the melted cheese on top. Mm -hmm. But also, what's really cool about this chopin dip is that because it's made in a stone pot. It's really crispy on the bottom, nice. so you get that nice crispy burnt rice, yeah. and that just makes it like so much more delicious than regular rice. Oh yeah. So we also got some free side dishes, and that's another thing we love about Korea. It doesn't matter what you're ordering, they're always going to give you a little something to taste until your meal gets here. So we got some kimchi here, which is your, your fermented cabbage. Again, this just makes an appearance in so many different forms. I know, even though we're having a main dish with kimchi, mm -hmm. you can never get enough of it. We'll, we will definitely mm -hmm. finish that side dish amount of kimchi. But, but you know what? The flavors are so much more intense when you're eating like the fresh kimchi. It's more like pickled and almost vinegary. Yeah. Um, and let's try this other thing. And I think that's the, if I remember I correctly. That's radish, I think that's radish, right? Yes, yeah, yellow radish. I think it's called tenmuji. And that's, okay. that's something I can't remember exactly. I'm going from Korea a little too long. Mm -hmm. But you find that a lot with, uh, especially with in Chinese Korean restaurants. Yeah. I mean, it's a staple in gimbap restaurants too, but it's always with Chinese Korean food. But you know what? This one's a little bit sweeter. So, not a huge fan. I prefer the spice, yeah. to be honest. Does it reset your palate a bit though? I guess it does, if you need a break from that burning sensation. <laughs> And we've got more side dishes. So over here, some kind of green vegetable. I don't think it's spinach, even though it looks like it. And it also has some sesame seeds, a little bit of onion, a little bit, bit of carrot. Let's get it all in. That's good. Well, we are just about done, so let's do price points. We polished that off with authority, guys. I needed help, actually. <laughs> you had to help me. Yeah, I probably had half of yours. <laughs> Kimchi bokumbap is just too, just, just way too delicious to leave on the table. So, so in terms of price point, that was eleven thousand five hundred won. So mm -hmm. men built on over one. And yours was 5,500 and yeah. mine was 6,000. And now if you get just the regular kimchi bokumbap, that's 5,000. So two of those would be a little bit less. Anyways, the, the stuff that we got came to roughly about 10 US dollars. So really good value, $5 per person, and we are leaving stuff, especially me.
Well, hello, hello. So we have another food video coming to you from Seoul, South Korea. And today we are having bure jjigae. So check this out. This is basically an army stew, Korean army stew. And half of the ingredients are American because after the Korean War, food supplies were kind of low. So Koreans started making their way to the American military bases. And there they found hot dogs, spam, ham. So it has some rather unusual ingredients yeah. for Korean food. This is kind of known as the leftover soup or yeah. stew. Yeah. It's got a lot of like strange ingredients all thrown mm -hmm. together, but it is it is a delicious uh, yeah. soup and stew. We've had it before and we're excited to try it again. So the traditionally Korean ingredients are things such as gochujang, the red pepper paste sauce, yeah. and also have kimchi. Mm -hmm. And we ordered two supplements and on the menu they were called sari. And so we ordered ramyun, which are the noodles. If you yeah. take a look down here, you can see the noodles cooking. Yeah, we've got like two Put them on for display. <laughs> and the other thing that we ordered as a supplement to add in was mandu. The mandu, the dumplings. And of course, those are the Korean dumplings. And mm. I just broke one off. Yeah, just destroying <laughs> our meal. Whoopsies. All right, so I guess now we just let it cook. Now we yeah. wait for it to boil. It's the hurry up and wait time. Um, yeah. And because this is a Korean meal, we couldn't forget the side dishes yeah. always present. So while we're, while we're waiting for this to cook, let's give you a tour of the banchan. So let's start here. We have the gongnam mul of bean sprouts. We have the kimchi, the fermented cabbage. We have kind of the fish cakes, and then we have the greens. So mm -hmm. it's a nice mix. And then we were each given uh, a, a thing bowl of rice. Of rice. You always have rice at the table. Yep. Doesn't matter what you're Never having. Never have a Korean super stew without rice yes. by your side. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. So our host at the restaurant just uh, turned off or either turned down our, our pot here, the heat yeah. on the pot. So I think it's ready to eat. And as you can see, the noodles definitely look cooked yeah. now. We also discovered they had some different kind of noodles as well. They have the, they're called the, the Korean glass noodles. So we have some other mystery ingredients. We also found that there is some tofu put in as well. Yeah, you can see the big, right big chunks there. of tofu there. And I mean, so. really, how long do you have to cook spam and hot dogs? Mm -hmm. I feel like this is all... It's good to go. Cooked, right? So you're getting okay. the toppings first, and then you're gonna get some of the soup. A little bit of everything. Yes, some, some soup. tofu. Some tofu. Love me some tofu. Trying to keep the camera away so it doesn't fog up. Yeah. yeah I'll <laughs> zoom into your bowl. So. There we, there we go. I think I have a little bit of everything. What else? Maybe some kimchi. Yeah, add some kimchi. Do you have enough soup? Yes. Ta da! Okay, so going in for my first bite, let's have a look down here. Honestly, I think the last time I ate hot dogs willingly, okay, it was probably either the last time I had bure jjigae <laughs> or when I was in middle school when I would like slice hot dogs and mix yeah, them in with like we're not, we're not big fans of it but on its own, but it, it somehow works in this, in this too, in this cream too. Mm. Mm, spraying everywhere. Spicy. All right, let's see what else we can find here. Maybe some noodles, with kimchi, and they're like slipping off my chopsticks. <laughs> Got some skill here. <laughs> it's still steaming. I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah, we can see it, especially if we look down at the pot. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. How is it? It's, like, it's good. Mm. It's kind of interesting having like Korean ingredients and American ingredients and it's like fast food for both cultures So you've got like ramen noodles which are super popular here You can get them to go and hot dogs So yeah, it's an interesting meal for sure But you have to try it when you come to Korea. It's one of those must-have dishes just for the experience All right, Time for me to go in for my first bite first Getting bite. a bit of tofu, a bit of noodles How is it? It's quite tasty. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect on a cold day like today. Mm -hmm. So we may have overcooked ours a little bit. Yeah, All so the we've, water we've, has we've, evaporated. We've turned it off. It's it's, it's being it's, I think it's been mostly absorbed by the noodles, but that's yeah, okay. And it's starting to stick. We're gonna have some nice thick noodles to eat. Yeah, this looks more like a stew than a soup now. Yeah. Check it out. Most definitely. All bundled up, ready to face the outdoors. <laughs> yeah, it's another cold day here in November in Korea. So in terms of price point, that was uh, very reasonable. 
the Budi Jigi came to 6,001 per person, so 12,000 in total. And with the Mandu and Ramyun supplement, that brought it up to 15,001. So Man Ocheon Won, which is roughly just over like 12 US dollars. So pretty cheap to eat all that food. In terms of the quality and the taste, it's definitely something that we both think is good. But compared to other cr traditional Korean soups and stews. Like the Jigae's. Yeah, like Sundubu Jigae and Kimchi Jigae, for example, uh, not quite up to that standard. So yeah. we would have this every once in a while. So good morning from Seoul, South Korea. It's a beautiful day out and we are starving. We haven't had breakfast today and it's almost lunchtime. <laughs> so we're going out for mandu. Yeah, this is one of our favorite Korean snacks and we can't wait to show you what it's all about. Let's go eat. All right, so the dumplings have arrived. Yeah, so super exciting moment for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> we really like this restaurant. It's just behind Hapjong Station, and they do specialize in mandu. Yes. So let's take a look down here. Ooh, but first, oh no, our soup is coming. Oh, cool. Yes. We also got mandu gook. Mm. Uh, but back to the main dish. Yeah, back so to the main we've dish. We've ordered a platter of mandu. So yeah. do you want to tell us a bit about so that? So take a look down here. This is called modem mandu. Yeah. And what that means is kind of assorted mandu. Yeah. So we got a whole bunch of different kinds. Mm -hmm. There's kind of like, I think there's your regular um, kimchi mandu. There's your meat mandu. I think yeah. there's a curry mandu. Yes. And there's another kind. So we're going to we're gonna sample all of them. Be trying all of those. Yeah. Five different types. Yeah. And you can see they're different shapes too. Yeah. Which is, which is really cool. Oh la la. And then the other dish that we got which is right in front of you, if we look down there, is mandu gook. So that's yeah. basically your, your mandu soup. So I'm starting with a rather unusual one. This is stuffed with curry. Mm. It's stuck to my palate. There we go. Yeah. So it's not your average Indian curry. It's like your Korean curry. So it's kind of mild yellow in color yeah it's interesting i've never had a curry dumpling before mm. okay so we have two orange dumplings this one here and this one so it has to be kimchi just based on the color alone i'm not sure if there's a difference maybe one of them also has meat i think the round one might have meat the one that you're so, picking up Mine. Spicy? This is spicy. I think <laughs> this is like kimchi and spice. Wow. Ooh. We weren't expecting that, huh? <coughs> oh, your turn. <laughs> so I've been having my mandu plain, but technically you're supposed to make a little sauce for it. Yeah. So this is a kind of a soy vinegar mixture here. Yeah. So you're gonna we're gonna pour a bit of this in here, and then we have kind of. Uh, some chili powder. Yeah, so just a little bit. That just stuff a is bit. potent, man. So I'm gonna mix that around with the chopsticks. Yeah. And, and then voila, that'll we have our dip. mix. We have our mix. So which one are you going to try? All right, I think I'll try this one over here, which I'm not entirely sure. I think this might be a gogi one, which oh, is me, yeah. but I'll find out in a moment. So put in the dip. <laughs> one bite. Oh. That's a sweet, sweet meat one. Oh, maybe it's bulgogi then. I think it is bulgogi. Oh. It, it does taste like bulgogi. There you go. Oh, man, that's so good. This place does awesome, man, dude. <laughs> All right, let's go in for round two. All right, so round two will be the other mystery one. So That looks here. like the classic, like, pork noodles. Yeah, let's see what that one is. Again, you're right. Uh, how, do you, how do you know I, I know them all. Do you know I eat mandu stuff? very often. <laughs> this is a very budget-friendly meal. So when I was first teaching in Korea and I had no money, I would go and get mandu for like $2.50. <laughs> so I mean, you can't really go wrong with it. No, you can't. Okay, and let's go for the third one that we haven't tried, which is the other kimchi one. Okay. And hopefully that one won't be as spicy, but we'll see how you fare. Mm. You know what? That one's it's spicy, but it's also a bit sweet. So I th definitely think it's different from the one you have. But you do taste the kimchi, but you also yeah. taste quite a bit of meat as well. Ooh, nice. really good. 
So for myself, I ordered the mandu goop. So let's have a look at the bowl here. This is a very light broth. It has some like whisked eggs in there, um, some seaweed, some pepper, and lots of dumplings. So you can just fish them out and put them in this little side bowl. So yeah, this is kind of like the type of meal you'd want to eat if you have a cold or you're feeling kind of sick. It's nice. That's what yeah, I it's like nice to have it. food. Yeah. It's now like, I, I see it as the Korean version of like a chicken noodle soup. <laughs> no, there's no chicken, but you know what I mean? It's just like a light broth. Yeah. So there, we have the, the classic mandu in there. This looks like the pork noodle veggie variety. And it's still steaming, so I don't want to burn myself. Yeah, that's something we have a bad habit of doing. We, we often burn ourselves. We don't blow on our food or let it cool down. That's nice. Else. I like this one because it's not spicy. It's just like very mild, simple food. And we'll grab some egg and some seaweed. And you know, it's starting to get really cold out, so it's also just a nice meal to be enjoying indoors. Mm, that's really nice. Love this dish. It's a classic. All right, Sam, so you want to give us a lesson on the history of mandu? So they think it possibly came from Mongolia or from the Middle East via Central Asia along mm -hmm. the Silk Road. Yeah. And so it shares a lot of similarities with uh, Central Asian... Uh, Monty. It's called Manti. Yeah. yeah and also Monty. Monty. And, Monty. Al <laughs> and also Tibetan momos. Yeah. And it also reminds us a little bit of, of the kind of dumplings you get in different parts of the world, like yeah. uh, pierogi in, in Poland, Poland. Yeah. and also empanadas in South America. So mm -hmm. it's a food we're very familiar with and it's something that we love. Also, when you come to Korea, you can get them in different forms. The ones we're having here are steamed, but you can also get them pan fried. Yeah. And they're called gunmandu, and they're typically in Korean Chinese restaurants. And you can also get giant sized ones, and they're called wongmandu. And those are also really good. So there's a lot of different ones you could try. Uh, highly recommend it. It's one of our favorite Korean snacks. In terms of price point, the mandu platter, the modu mandu, came to 3,500 won. And the mandu gook, the soup, was 5,000 won. So in total, that was palchon obek won. So really good value. That's about around 7 US dollars. And this place is so popular, they have two locations right beside each other. And once again, it's behind Hapjong Station. So definitely check it out if you're in Seoul. And someone has a mouthful of candy. Yeah. How are you able I to have speak? Two, I have two mints in my mouth right yeah, now. Yeah, so you get free candy at the Mul end. Multitasking over here. <laughs> Well, good afternoon. I have just woken up from my afternoon nap and I decided, hey, street food would be pretty nice. So we decided you know to what? check out a local market. Korean street food is a good idea any time of day as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so we're at the Mangwon Market. This is a really cool market here in Seoul. It's not one of those popular touristy markets. It's very much a local market. It's nearby Hapjong and also Hongdae area. Um, and so we're just gonna go check it out. We're gonna show you guys what you can find here as well as sample a whole bunch of different Korean street food here in Seoul. So Let's exciting it. times. Let's start eating. So we're starting off with uh, the Chongwon menu, the 1001 menu. It should be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Got it right here. Let's see it. This one's for Hello. you. Hey, 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 yeah, look, look at, at that. that. So it looks like a donut, but it's actually a croquet. I saw that when I ordered. Oh, so a okay. pumpkin croquet. So we were way off. Well, but hey, I love same. I love getting a deal. It's this is like literally half price of what I thought. All right, let's dig in. So let's try this. I've never had this before. This yeah. is this is fascinating for me because I've tried most Korean street food, but I've never tried this. I'm curious to see if it's going to be savory or sweet. It's actually both. kind of both. It's a little bit sweet, but it's also savory. Like it's. So I guess I gotta the, have another the bite. Dough, the dough is probably more savory since it's been deep fried. Oh. 
Then the pumpkin mm. would be sweet. I'm um, look at this. Give us, give us a good look. You can see, really see the pumpkin here. Ooh. You can really see the pumpkin here. Look at that. That almost looks like curry. Mm. Yeah, it's. I'm actually gonna correct myself. It's a bit more savory than it is sweet. So. More savory than sweet. All right. Well, you're clearly enjoying it. It's like falling out of your mouth. Wolfing it down over on. here. Okay, so you want to tell us what you ordered? Yeah, absolutely. We're having dokboki, which is basically my all-time favorite Korean street food snack. So let's take a look down here. I'll give you a tour. So the dokboki part here is basically the Korean rice cakes in the gochujang yeah. sauce, the spicy red pepper sauce. And then you also have fish cakes. And then over here, I ordered something called dwigim, which is the basically the fried battered objects that come along with it. Objects, mostly vegetables no, ob though. <laughs> so I have like a uh, mandu. Okay, and a this, dumpling. This one's called yache, which is different vegetables. And then okay. over here, we also have... I think there's sweet potato yes, somewhere Yes, sweet there potato, pumpkin, which right? is a kokuma. So can't wait to try all that. All so right. I'm going to start off with the dough cookie. Right, here we go. One big piece of rice cake. That's a giant size rice cake. It's like extra well, long. Oh, much of soil. <laughs> very delicious. Yeah, very good. Much of soil. Oh, that's awesome. Such good dog cookie. And now we're going to try the dwigim. Okay. So I'm taking the sweet potato piece here. I'm going to take mm -hmm. it for a swim here in the goji jump sauce. sauce. Yep. And okay, let's try that. <laughs> a little messy over there. Don't burn yourself. A little bit too big of a bite. <laughs> it's like fresh out of the deep fryer. Uh, That's my favorite dwigim. Yeah. If you're gonna try one kind of dwigim in Korea with your dakogi, make sure you get the kokoma, you get the sweet potato. It's just so good, so sweet, so delicious. And it tastes so good when it's crispy. So before I gobble all of the dwigim and dakogi, why don't I uh, share a little with you? Share a little. So I'm going to add some sauce to mine. So this is pretty cool. It's kind of like a spicy soy chili sauce with sesame seeds. Oh yeah. So you can either use a spoon just if you want to get over. lots of it, or you can use this little brush and like just paint the dwigam. That's awesome. So and you're it gives try it a lot more flavor. Just makes it spicier. You're gonna try the dwigam then. Yeah. Which one do you have? Mandu. Mandu. Mm. How's that? It's nice and spicy. No, it's good. I like it a lot better with the sauce. It gives it more flavor. So even though you can find lots of street food here, that's not the only thing they sell at this market. You can also get lots of fresh produce, fruits, vegetables, they have butchers, you can buy clothes, you can buy school supplies. So a little bit of everything, there's definitely lots of variety here. So which package are you getting, Audrey? I guess this one, the little ones. Oh. I forgot to count my money. It's 2001. So what did you get, Audrey? So I got myself some little rice cakes. I'm not going to eat them right now because we've been having a lot of street food. I'm taking this home for later as a little snack. They come in different colors, but the filling is often the same for all of them. Um, might be red bean paste. That's what it usually is with the bigger ones. I'm not sure with the little ones. So Yeah, they have different fillings and these are called dok and I think these might be songpyeon. I think these might be the ones that are ha that you have on special holidays. And they're especially sweet. They're sweeter than most. So they're really good. Okay, so we just finished covering one half of the market. 
now we're ooh, nearly got run over there. Now we're going to cross the street and visit the second half of the market, which continues on the other side of the road. And I've been holding out for sweets, so I really hope I can find some hotok when we're there. Another thing I find really amusing is that people are going through the market on motorbikes even though it's a pedestrian only area or so it would seem. So you have to be careful and kind of watch out because they come out of nowhere. Somebody hasn't tired of the rice cakes today. Yeah, sticking with the theme of the rice cakes for this afternoon <laughs> I tried I got another Korean street food snack here. We've got something called tokochi So I'm gonna take a bite and then describe it to you after mm. so, How this is different from dokbuki is that the sauce is completely different. This is more like a sweet and sour type of chili sauce That's mm -hmm. on top of it also, the rice cakes have been cooked differently. They're, they've been obviously cooked a little bit longer and they're crispier, but also still chewy while you're chewing them. So this is almost a, a little bit almost like a dessert snack. So are the rice cakes pan fried then? I think they are. Yeah. Because they are crispy on the outside. So yeah. Really good. And again, this one was only chun won, so less than one US dollar. You Can't know what's kind of funny? With this dish, I had never tried it in Korea, but then when we were yeah. in Kyrgyzstan, your, your first time to try it was in I Bishkek, had a Kyrgyzstan. Korean restaurant in a Kyrgyzstan. Korean restaurant, so there which you go. Is kind of unusual. I'm gonna go in for more. Mm. So, if you had to choose, do you prefer tteokbokki or tteokbokki? They're nothing alike, so it's hard. It's, it's comparing apples with oranges. But right now, I've I've had quite a bit of savory things, so I'm appreciating the kind of the sweet chili sauce on this. A very diplomatic answer. <laughs> so you're up again. What have you got? I found my favorite all-time Korean street snack. This is called hotok and it kind of looks like a donut or a really fat pancake and it's usually filled with brown sugar and pine nuts. Yours is a special cinnamon. one. What's what's yours? This, this is a one is one. nokcha. So this is a green, green tea hotok, which I have never had before. And just looking at it, it looks like it's got like little bits of like green tea, like loose leaf. Yeah, yeah. So let's see what it tastes like. Try that. Oh, so hot. So piping hot. She just Frankly made it for you. Made. Mm -hmm. Just made that for you. Have you got to the gooey part in the middle yet? I haven't gotten to the gooey part. I don't know if there's a gooey part. Maybe this one's just like sprinkled with tea. First impressions though, is it sweet? It tastes like a sweet donut. So far, so good. I think it may have a filling though. Mm. There we go. So look at that. There you have your brown caramelized sugar, some nuts, a little bit of green tea loose leaf, cinnamon. It smells amazing. And so you, you, you call it, it, smells, it amazing. smells like Christmas, right? I think that's one of the reasons I like it so much. It's just like such a comforting aroma. It smells like Christmas. It's so, so good. And I'm burning myself right now having this, but it's just so good. I don't really want to wait. And how much was it? One thousand won. Wow, another tone one. So less than a dollar. Mm -hmm. We're just feasting like kings and queens here without paying much at all. We sure are. So someone couldn't resist temptation. He's having some hot. You know what? Too. You were kind enough to share, so I really yeah. appreciate that. Because we were supposed to just kind of each get our own things, but let's try it. Mm -hmm. This is definitely my favorite. Korean street food dessert snack, like mm -hmm. bar none. This is so good. I could eat this every day and probably not get sick of it. And we decided we couldn't wait until we get got home to try the rice cake. I know. So. Considering I just had something sweet, the whole talk, it was like I could have a little something else, and I've already bought these. So I'm gonna dig into the rice cakes. And I wonder 
Like, I wonder if the green ones are like green tea flavor or anything like that. Yeah, I think the, the white one is going to be sweet and the pink one. I'm not sure about the green one. Let's though. try the pink one. So these are little. They're like mini sized. Let's see what's in them. Mm. It's not red bean paste. It's like a, like a sweet jelly. It's orange, but I have no idea what... What kind? No idea what it is. I've never had this before. Does it taste good? It tastes great. Yeah. All right, I'm going. I'm going in for one. Yeah, Look at he's this. going Here in. Here comes the hand. <laughs> Let's see if you can decipher the mystery ingredient. It's almost like syrupy. Mmm. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mmm. Those are so good. I um, know. Is this so good? I'm having one more. Uh, one more. Open it up. I have a pink one. I think they all have the same filling though. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's think? delicious. Yeah. So how did you enjoy this market? It was awesome. I really appreciate this market because it's such a local uh, feel as opposed to feeling like a touristy market. Mm -hmm. And that made it a lot of fun. There are people that who were in the market that were curious about what we were doing. Nobody was jaded, nobody told us, hey, no pictures, no taking video. Everyone was like really into what we were doing. And that was awesome. I think it's just, it's a cool alternative to some of the more popular markets in Seoul. Mm -hmm. And it's just one stop away from Hapjong on the Brown Line. So if you come here, you can go to Mangwon Station and go at exit two. And then it's like five minute walk and you're yeah. here. You turn left at the yeah. exit and then left again at the next major intersection, yeah. so it's not far at all. So highly recommend coming here and man, am I ever full. So for today's video, we're at a place called Sulbing and this is a popular chain in Korea that specializes in frozen desserts we're going to be trying something that's quite similar to pad bingsu and pad bingsu is a shaved ice dessert with red beans but we're having soobing which is actually frozen milk that's been shaved into these little snowflakes so you get a much creamier dessert and we've ordered two different varieties so those are coming up yeah and the soobing is basically your quintessential korean summer dessert yes and it's super hot out so we're cooling down with that right now Look what she's got! It is here! La, 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 la. So dessert is here! Yeah, so I got the blueberry cheesecake solving. So let's mm -hmm. take a look at that. And before we, I even like begin to talk about this, like I've got to show you just how big this is with a sense of scale. Like look, this is my hand. This thing is like bigger than my freaking hand basically. <laughs> so the, the coolest thing that stands out to me, as, aside from obviously how big it is, is that they're real blueberries. Yeah. Like look at this, real big, blueberries. thick blueberries. So that is gonna be my first bite, and I'm gonna get a piece of the cheese and the sauce here, along with some shaved ice. I sense a brain freeze coming off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's mm, frozen. I froze them, but you know what? delicious the kind of topping they put on there's also a glaze a blueberry glaze mm -hmm. and it's similar to the glaze that you would you would put on a cheesecake yeah and then you get those nice big thick blueberries and on top of that the refreshingness of, of the the shaved condensed milk yeah. shaved ice and then the big chunks of cheesecake like this is just a and wonderful summer dessert you also have ice cream there yours is topped with yeah. ice cream i'm a little jealous right now like, mine doesn't come with ice cream. seriously guys this is this is like to beat the 35 degree weather in korea in august Ooh, and one more thing it comes oh. with uh with oh, yeah. milk sweetened milk let's pour that on let's pour it all Ooh. over it looks like condensed milk Ooh. Now that is a thing of beauty, guys. Ooh la la. Oh yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this one. Okay, so mine is here as well. I ordered the chocolate brownie. I've had this one before. It's delicious, so <laughs> why bother trying something new? Like when, you, when we walked in here, you're like, I'm getting the chocolate brownie. <laughs> I, I already, no I knew what I was ordering. There was like no negotiations there. So like, just I'm getting the, the one I want, and I'm gonna eat it all too, right? Yeah. 
So let me give you a tour of the bowl. So basically you've got your, your shaved milk down here yeah. and all around you have chunks of brownie cheesecake, brownie cheesecake, and then you have whipped cream right here and it's all topped off with a chocolate powder and yeah, chocolate like a, it's sauce. It's like a cocoa powder almost. Yeah. yeah. So look at that, wow. So let's have first bite. It's so big it's like falling over from the sides. <laughs> I don't want to waste any of it. I'm so scared of the brain freeze. Mm. Mm. Not so good. Wow. I almost feel like I want to let it melt a little bit and turn into a milkshake and mix it all together. That's how I like my swooping. So I think one of the things that we both really enjoy about this dessert is that it just keeps on giving. It's full of surprises. <laughs> so big. So if you take a look at my bowl. So many layers. I just discovered that mine has Oreo cookie crumbs like towards the bottom. I had no idea it came with Oreo cookies. So that was a nice surprise. And same with yours. Like you ended up finding more more fruit in the middle, right? Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, there was actually there was actually more blueberry sauce at the bottom of it. So mm. it's like as you keep going, yeah, keep getting more surprises. I know, and I'm already full, and I haven't even finished half of my. <laughs> keep going. We're gonna be here a while. Well, thank you, Sam, for helping me finish that. Was it tasty? Yeah. Which did you prefer, chocolate brownie or a blueberry cheesecake? They're both really good, but the, the blueberry cheesecake was like was amazing. Amazing. Like, that's like 90 something, and yours is like low 90s or high 80s. So. <laughs> We're Still working good. with percentages here, all right. Yeah. So, time for the price. How much did the solving cost? So, mine was Man Won, 10,000 won. And yours was 8,500, also Mobek one, and so total 18,500. So you're looking at around 17 US bucks. So yeah. not bad. We were a little greedy. We probably could have just got one, I'd say. Mm -hmm. One would have been enough. And we had Doc Boogie for lunch, so oh, I have a bit of a gut bomb now. <laughs> but if you want, <laughs> if you want to cool off yeah, on a hot day in, in Korea, definitely recommend this stuff. All right, ta-ta. Starting off by having one of our favorite Korean meals. This is Korean style shabu shabu. And unlike other types of shabu shabu, where you have like Japanese and Chinese shabu shabu, Korean shabu shabu is unique in the sense that it comes with three different courses. Yeah. So even before we cook it here for you, you can all these nice aromas yeah, and, look and at the steam, steam is coming rising. right in my face. Ooh. Before we even do that, let's take a look up the toppings and this I can explain things a bit more clearly. Okay, so, so this is first. Yeah, so basically these is your plate of vegetables. You've got um, mandu, which are the Korean dumplings. You've got pumpkin, all kinds of different lettuce, yeah. different things. And then over here you have the meat, which is the shabu shabu. Basically this is like your thinly sliced beef. Mm -hmm. So after we're done cooking the meat and the vegetables, we cook the noodles. And these are called kalguksu. They are yeah. handmade noodles. They are awesome. That is one of my favorite parts. But mm -hmm. actually my very favorite part is right at the end, we add this rice and we turn it into kind of basically you use over your leftover shabu shabu yeah. and you kind of turn it into a bokubop which is a Korean style of fried rice and it is awesome so no more rambling let's get cooking <laughs> let's start cooking so the broth is boiling which means it's time to start cooking our food so we're just gonna drop in the greens first yeah, look at all of the different assorted oh greens we have over here it's just a ton. And some mushrooms. Look at these. Yeah, and the key uh, here is that you actually definitely want to cook your meat before you start cooking the meat. Because the meat cooks like almost like, on an instant, like almost instantaneously. Yeah, in drop like a it. second. Yeah, just drop all that in there. Oh, you know what? We're supposed to be using our scissors. That's what they're for. So I'm just going to dig right in here with my hands. And this is gonna make it easier to eat the vegetables. <laughs> yeah, we should have been doing that from the Whoops. get go. Whoopsies. So 
So we're just waiting for those vegetables and mushrooms to cook and then we're going to put in the meat. And I think I can say we're both salivating at this point. Yeah. It smells so good. Pretty much just drooling over the over this pot here. <laughs> so like we were saying, the meat really does cook in like a second or two. Yeah, so look, Sam's going is, to demonstrate. Look how thinly sliced this is. And it's red. It's totally raw right now. Yeah. Plop it in. Watch this. And swish it around. Swish it around. And that's how Shabu Shabu gets its name. It's basically an onomatopoeia, meaning that it it's the sound of the shabu, shabu. The, the sound it makes when it's Look cooking. Look at that. It's already cooked. Wow. So I think we're finally ready to mm -hmm. serve ourselves up some of that yes. delicious shabu shabu. The Korean first style. The course is done. Look at that. So I'm going to try and get a bit of everything. So there we go. My bowl is all served up. And we have some mushrooms, the beef, tofu, greens, a rice cake, and of course the broth. So let's go for the beef. Ooh, look at that. It's steaming. I'm going to try not to burn myself. It seems to happen at every meal. Mmm. Oh, it's really nice and tender. And it's taken on the flavor from the broth, which is super nice. A little bit of spice at the end. But yeah, that's good. I'm trying that broth directly? Mm hmm. Alright, serving myself up a massive bowl over here. I think I grabbed too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big Whoopsies. portion. Okay, so I'm gonna go for some of the, the lettuce and the meat first. Oh, that's a nice big piece of meat. Super hot. Wow. You know, the last time we had shabu shabu was actually when we were in Korea. And that was like over three years ago. Mm -hmm. It was amazing <laughs> having it again. Like, I'm in a very happy place right now. So, you're grabbing some more meat over here, huh? I sure am. Because aside from eating the meat like straight out of your soup bowl, they also give you these two sauces. So this one is kind of like soy sauce with a little bit of vinegar and some chives. And then they also have this like sweet chili, which is really nice. <laughs> so I've been dipping my meat. And you know the hardest thing about filming this meal is trying not to get the lens all fogged up from the <laughs> I know. It is so hot at the table. I'm like literally sweating here. I feel like the makeup is melting off my face while I eat. Better with the sauce? That's really nice. It's just nice to mix it up, you know, because we've got a really large portion. So just a little bit of everything. It's good. Mm. Mm. So good. That's so good. Wow. So what are you having over there? Yeah, so aside from just all of the, the meat and, and the vegetables, there's lots of other ingredients as well. Mm -hmm. So I've got a rice cake in between my chopsticks here, so I'm gonna try that. Mm. Nice and chewy. Yeah, <laughs> nice and chewy. <laughs> when you're eating Korean rice cakes, the thing is you really do need to chew them all. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that I'm gonna try here is the mandu. And this one has been cooking for so long. This is the Korean dumpling. This one has been cooking for so long that it's like kind of turned into a, gi a gigantic mandu, like a long mandu. Let's try this here. <laughs> that looks a little bit hot. <laughs> try not to burn yourself. That is super hot. I'm like, <laughs> I'm burning the top of my, my gums over here, but yeah, that's really good. That's just kind of your plain standard uh, gogi meat mandu here. Mm. Loving it. So we've been eating the meat and vegetables and we are now ready for round two. This is round two. So as I dump this in Carefully. through the bowl. Carefully, don't splash. Ah. This is the official start of round two of our meal. So basically yeah. we've moved on from the meat and vegetables. There's still a bit left. Yeah. But now we are cooking the, the noodles here. It's Korean noodles. Okay, so it is now time for the noodles. So they're green and orange. And I believe these are like vegetable colored. Mm. Mm. Oh, 
How's that? Really nice. Wow. They look really thick from over here. They're chewy too. But yeah, it's really nice because our broth is getting thicker and you can really taste the meat and the vegetables that have been cooking there. So yeah, the noodles have kind of taken on that flavor. It's pretty nice. All right, and we have officially moved on to phase three, which is the kokumbap, the rice part. Yeah, this is my favorite part. So we've done this before. Um, we're just throwing it all in with a bit of the broth. <laughs> Boom. Boom. All right, so now we have to stir that to make sure it doesn't stick. All right, guys, this is what I've been waiting for. The rice is done. Take a look at that. So we have it all finished here. Basically, yeah. we, we left enough ingredients so that there was still quite a bit from the original shabu shabu yeah and then we mix it all together with the rice and the egg and the sauce just absorb and we let it sit there for a while and we let it cook long enough that i think we've let the rice burn at the bottom which is just that's the best part yeah, yeah. so we've now shut off the heater but we're letting it get crispy all right it is super crispy it's super crispy here <laughs> maybe even a little burnt <laughs> okay let's try that Honestly guys, that's better than just about any kind of bokum bok that you would make just on its own. The leftovers from Shabu Shabu are incredible with Korean fried rice. Well Sam, I think you got it all because there isn't much left in there. Yeah, we're pretty much just scraping at the bottom of the bowl at this point. <laughs> Yeah, so we finished everything, so now it's time to pay the bill. So how much was it? So in terms of price point, that was 26,000 won, Iman Yukchon won, which is 23 US dollars right now. Yeah. And that is for two people, so that's yeah. fantastic value. And for a three course meal. I know, so. and we're so full. So. Yeah, we're leaving satisfied. Come get Shabu Shabu when you're in Korea. So for today's lunch, we're actually first at the restaurant. This place is empty, it's about 11 a.m., but we were super hungry. So we are going to be having something called galbi, and that's marinated short ribs you can get pork or beef. We've ordered pork because it's a little bit cheaper, and it comes in a really sweet marinade, which we really enjoy. So we're gonna be cooking those at the table. And another thing that sets galbi apart from, say, some gepsal or another meat, is that it's cooked over charcoal. So they're gonna be bringing that soon and just putting it right there, so. No, yeah. super excited. This is like the ultimate Korean grill barbecue <laughs> experience. Want some of that? All right, guys, so the star of the meal has arrived. This is the galbi in its marinade, which is made out of soy sauce, garlic, and sugar. Now we're just waiting for the charcoal to arrive. Oh. Uh, some of that? It's here. That's scary. I can feel the heat coming off of it. Yeah, you can, you can really feel the warmth. It's like campfire style. Yeah. Look at that. Ah, come some of that. Yeah. <laughs> so we also get shrimp, which is kind of cool. Wow. Ah, come on, some of that. Yeah. It smells great. Like you can already smell the sweetness coming off of the meat. That's I so know. good. I'm like, mm. we, we had this. I have to admit, we had this like maybe <laughs> Two five days ago. No, I think it's more like four or five was days it? ago. But like, it was so good. And yeah. coming back here again and, and filming it, like we know what we're getting. Oh um, yes. This is this Our is gonna is be. Watering yeah, I, I feel I feel like the Pavlovian dog here. You know, I'm just salivating at the <laughs> the sight of. Uh, at the sight of this meat. This looks incredible. So our meat has been cooking for a while. Now we're going to flip it. I'm gonna flip it over. We have the grill master at the table. Uh, well, not exactly, especially when compared to your dad, but uh, you know. I think it's trying. It, I'm trying, I'm learning a little bit here and there. 
I think it's uh, in terms of cooking meat, it's attention to detail, and you don't want to wait for it to to cook too long because yeah. at that point, you've uh, you've reached the point of no return. <laughs> yeah, then you're you're stuck with really then hard you, meat. Yeah, exactly. So we're just gonna pay attention to this and flip it frequently. Mm. So this is what our table looks like right now. Check out all those side dishes. Yeah, and we still have the rice and jjigae left to come, so. Mm. Voila, so now we can begin. Yeah, yeah. this is the, the moment we've been waiting for. Okay, so Sam is ready to assemble his first piece. Oh man, you better believe it. Ready for the I, I just can't believe how kind the people are here. The, the service is incredible. Like they just yeah, they, they did, cooked it for yeah, us. Yeah, they didn't have to do that, and they did, which was so nice of them. I think, like, I mean, we could have done it by ourselves, but you know, it's always nice to have a local doing it because they they really know the ins and outs of cooking it. Mm -hmm. So I am basically. I've got my piece of galbi, yeah, and I've dipped it into some samjang sauce here. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit more on. So I've got Onions. onion, I've got lettuce, and look, here comes the chicken. We have more coming. Wow. Pop up. <laughs> some of that. Yeah. So it's all been assembled here. It's just time to pop it in my mouth. Give me a moment here. <laughs> Savor it. <laughs> that was a massive bite. So How was it? Incredible. Yeah. So yeah, they did an excellent job of cooking it. It's, it's cooked well. I mean, when you're having uh, when you're having pork, when you're having the the dwayji galbi, you want to make sure it's cooked well enough. Mm -hmm. And you really taste the marinade. And then what I love, the sam jam gives it a bit of a kick. That has. Um, the red pepper paste it's and also the soy yeah. paste and then when you combine it with lettuce and onion it's just like, oh, it's really amazing good. the meat is really tender <laughs> all right so now it's my turn i'm gonna go for the sesame leaves or perilla leaves so let's get a piece this one looks good I'm gonna dip it in your sauce sam stole the sauce it's my sauce not sharing my sauce <laughs> this what else can I put? Maybe a little bit of kimchi? Yeah, why don't you, why don't you mix it up a bit differently than mine? That's kind of cool. Some of this. Ooh, that looks good. Some of this over here. Let's see, what else could I add? And, oh, garlic. I can't forget the garlic. Some of that. And I think that's probably a big enough bite. <laughs> so I'll just roll it all up. And that's what's so fun about Korean barbecue is just like, I mean, I think it's so, so awesome to cook things in front of your table, but it's even fun to assemble the, the meat afterwards, you know, putting it in, in the lettuce and putting in the leaf and all the different ingredients. Mm -hmm. Man, it's good. It's really nice. It's very sweet. And also, the thing I like, these leaves, they almost have like a bit of a minty flavor to them. So it's really refreshing when you mix it with the meat. It's a nice combination. I almost like it a little bit more than the lettuce. The more I eat it, I'm starting to enjoy it's that. It's growing one. on you. Mm -hmm. That's that one's still not my favorite, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it's kind of good. You can have those. I'll take the lettuce. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to give you a tour of the side dishes, and we have a lot on the table. Let's start on this side, actually. Here we have some kind of salad with a spicy sauce. Yeah, I'm not even entirely sure down. what the ingredients are here, but it also has some sesame seeds. Different greens. Mm -hmm. and we also have this light broth here that I've been drinking while Sam hasn't been paying attention. Yeah, it's got a lot of uh, pa, a lot of onions. Yeah, some chives, but then if we go cabbage. Over, if we go over here, this is the soup that comes with the rice. This is the, the green jjigae. Yeah. And that's a soybean paste uh, soup. And some you can tofu. see the big chunk of tofu there. That's yeah. delicious. That's such a nice, nice thing to accompany the uh, <laughs> the galbi. We also have lots of onions here, and what you're supposed to do is just grab them, yeah, and stick them in this. Stick them in bowl. there, swirl them around a bit, and then yeah. over here we have more salad, right? Yeah. So this is like a lettuce and yogurt salad with raisins, mm -hmm. which is kind of sweet. It's really nice. Oh, we this one. This one is one of my pumpkin. favorites. Oh man, this is really good. That's the date. With the date, Sam can have that one because yeah. I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> I love fan. that. 
And what else? We've got some greens here. This reminds me of baby bok choy. I'm yeah. not sure if that's right or not. And then over Sesame here we have seeds. we have kimchi. Kimchi, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and then we have some green noodles those are in really a spicy tasty. sauce. So basically tons. What's this? And this is crab. Yeah. We also have crab at the table. So we and rice. <laughs> So I think guys, I think the overall message here is we might we may have enough food. Yeah. I don't I, think we're gonna I think starve. So I think we have enough. Don't think we'll starve today. And one more thing, they also gave us this. It's kind of like a like a cold broth. It has chunks of ice and a radish. Yeah, it's super refreshing. Mm. Yeah, maybe it's a palate cleanser. I'm not sure. But anyways, let's go let's go back to the meat. That's the star of the meal here. So it is now time for a complimentary dessert, which is also quite refreshing. Yeah, we like polished that meat off big time. So, so nice of them to bring over a shike, mm -hmm. which is basically like a, it's basically like a, a sweet rice. It's a refreshing drink more or less. You have chunks of rice and it's some sugar added. It's really good. And this one's kind of slushy. Mm. It's like semi-frozen, yeah, which I is think perfect they, for summer. They've made it per perfectly for summer. They put a lot of ice in there. Oh man, it's really good. Really sweet, really refreshing. Yeah. Mm. Mm. One of the other cool things is that sometimes you'll find in Korean restaurants to have these like these self-serve coffees. And man, are they ever good. Like I, I'm on a bit of a diet these days, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm having <laughs> black coffee. But this has Black got coffee or this, sweetened no, super this, sugary coffee? No, this year has like a lot of milk and sugar. So this okay. is like this is like a dessert coffee for ah, me. Ah, okay. So, a little bit of a cheat here. Mm, nice. So it is time to wrap up that meal. Tell us how much did our galbi you know face what? cost? It's, it's always a little bit of a sad occasion when a Korean barbecue ends because it's just so fabulous. <laughs> so... <laughs> That was 14,000 won each, so it came in total to 28,000 won, so Iman Palton won, which with current exchange is roughly about 25 US dollars. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, $12.50 for like all of this food, all of the meat, all of the side dishes, the drinks that you saw, even the dessert and the coffee, I mean, that's to me, that's phenomenal value. So when you're coming to Korea, especially in Seoul, anywhere in Korea for that matter, indulge in Korean barbecue, you won't be disappointed. Alright, so good morning from Seoul, South Korea. It's a bit of a lazy weekend today, a slow start. Sam was watching baseball, so I've been waiting for him to be ready. Yeah, my team <laughs> lost. The Cubs lost <laughs> today, so I'm a little depressed. <laughs> but anyways, today we're kind of doing brunch. So we're at Cafe Bene, which is one of our favorite coffee chains. And Cafe Bene is huge in Korea. Like a few years back, they had close to a thousand branches spread out across the country. So it's super popular. Um, so yeah, we're here to have some drinks, some food, and we'll be showing you that as soon as it arrives. So funny story. Originally, we came here because we wanted to eat their gelato waffle because when we used to live in Korea, that's what we would get every single time. And their waffles are so good because they're all like caramelized and fluffy and they're just amazing. So we came, we placed our order, and then we noticed like the buzzy thing, like it was calling us back right away and we're like, wow, our food's really, really <laughs> fast. But no, I go downstairs and the guy's like, waffle impossible. So I guess, I don't know, they were out of dough or maybe something happened. So we had to change up our order. So I'll show you what we got instead. And I think it still looks good. It's not going to be gelato yeah, waffle. We're, but... we're, we're still getting mm -hmm. one of their top specialties here, which is mm -hmm. their gelato. And we're getting nokcha. the, the, the nokcha green tea flavor. Yes. And what else do we have? And we have a hot cheese bagel with jalapeno. That looks That's pretty so good. good. You can see the cheese oozing out. Yeah. And then this, I'm pretty sure is a new product. I haven't seen it before on the menu. It said uh, topping pastry. So we've got some kind of pastry here with whipped cream, and chocolate powder. It's definitely big. Yeah. And a drink. Vanilla latte. All right, Sam, what are you starting with? <sighs> Going for the good stuff. Going the for gelato. the green tea gelato. Ooh la la. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh mm. man, that's so good. Mm -hmm. Such a rich, rich green tea flavor. Yeah. All right, what's next? What are you gonna get into? How about right. your coffee? Yeah, what am I trying to try? coffee. Vanilla latte. My vanilla latte. So, just rip off the top here. 
try that. Take the lid off. Show us how frothy it is. Come, Come on. on. Good point. <laughs> so otherwise you can't even see it. <laughs> the viewers want to see. <laughs> okay, frothy. Very creamy. frothy. How is that? It's a good latte. Yeah. Although it doesn't have that strong of a vanilla taste, mm -hmm. but really creamy, really good. All right, so we're going to share the bagel. Cutting that in half. Oh, yeah. Man, That's look at the cream cheese. It's like oozing stuck. out. Oh, wow. Totally oozing out. Whoa. Totally oozing out. So this one in the middle, it has cream cheese, but they also put like, I guess a regular matzo cheese and melted it on top of the cream cheese. So it's like decadent. Look at how cheesy that is. <laughs> I know. And you also see the chunks of jalapeno. So look how thick that, that thing might is. be. It's a behemoth. It's, mm. it's a behemoth. Mm. Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> mm, it's really nice. So how would you describe it? Super cheesy with a bit of a kick. So Sam is going to attack the topping pastry yeah. before it melts. Yeah, time to attack this big bad boy. So I think they put some whipping cream and cocoa powder on. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. It's slowly losing its shape and just like oh, wow. running down the side. Just from cutting it, it kind of has the consistency of a cinnamon bun. So Ooh. let's try that here. Mm. Oh wow. Okay, yeah, that's definitely whipped cream yeah. with the cocoa on top. And the pastry itself, it looks like really big, but it's actually really kind of light. And fluffy. And bright, yeah, very light and fluffy. And it's perfect for putting this type of topping, like a whipped cream on top of yeah. it. Because it just, uh, it adds a lot to it. Is there is there anything in the pastry? Does it have raisins? Um, let's investigate over Let's actually here. investigate that. I didn't get anything in my first Investigative bite. Investigative eating. I don't think so, but it does yeah. have chocolate. It does appear to have yeah. chocolate on that. Chocolate is always a good thing. That's really good. Yeah. Nice and light. So what's your favorite thing so far that we've ordered? Well, I mean, today? obviously the gelato, but the I, gelato. Haven't had, I haven't tried this one yet, so. The bagel? No, bagel's up next for me. Okay. Why don't I just take a bite right here? I'm gonna take one of yours. Go for it. Stealing yours. Mm. Oh, wow. I'm kind of glad we ordered something a little bit savory. Yeah. Ooh, it's spicy too. I know. I'm feeling that spice. I'm seeing that, yeah. This is, this is really pleasant. Sometimes it's good when, you know, like, because they didn't have the waffle, this is getting us out of, I wouldn't say our comfort zone, but out of what yeah. we would normally order. It forced us to try something forced new. Forced us to try some new things. We still decided to make the video, so yeah. we're rolling with it today. So we polished off all of that food. It was really good. The two items we liked the most were the jalapeno bagel mm -hmm. with green cheese and real cheese and also the green tea gelato. That was fantastic. So in terms of price point, it came to just under 20,000 won. So uh, I think it was actually, what was it, 19,000? Yeah. So that's Mancuchon won. And roughly that's about 16 or 17 US dollars. Uh, not bad value. I mean, we got three different food items and a really large drink. So it's not super cheap, but it's the kind of place that you want to come and relax and have a nice sweet treat, basically. Yeah, so if you guys come and check out Cafe Benny, make sure you get the waffle. Yes. <laughs> Demand <laughs> the waffle. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap from Seoul. Ta -ta. All right, so it is time for another food video, and today's is kind of breakfast slash lunch. It's yeah. called brunch. <laughs> basically a brunch here in Seoul, Korea. And we're having one of my favorites. We are having Korean porridge, which is known mm. as juke. And juke is like this really kind of like, it's considered to be a health food here in Korea. Yeah. And it's made out of like glutinous rice and different ingredients. I'm getting one made out of pumpkin. You're getting more of a savory one made yes. out of shrimp. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is that there's like a lot of health benefits associated with this food. So it's the type of food you eat when you're sick or when you're having bad digestion and it's considered kind of a slow slow food kind of a, a get well type of meal so sam are, are you having trouble with your digestion is that why we're here <laughs> no that's not why we're here today we're, we're here just because it's tasty oh okay <laughs> the food is here so i got the seiyu juke so if you have a look here this is a shrimp porridge and it comes in a massive bowl, first of all. I wonder if we're actually supposed to share because they gave us a tiny bowl with a ladle so you can kind of like just pour it for yourself. 
Yeah, you could definitely so come here and order one of these to share. Yeah. But I mean, we're hungry, so we're gonna try to see if we one can each. finish our own. And look at that, and it's topped off with it looks like little sesame seeds and maybe yeah. some some seaweed. So I'll just mix so it all. So yours, yours is a bit different than mine. I think mm -hmm. the chunks, like the the chunks of rice that that, that it's been made with, mm -hmm. appears to be thicker yes. than mine. It's not as smashed or as glutinous as mine. Yeah. So mine's chunkier. And mine also has carrots and chives. So this looks great. Yeah, I was kind of craving something savory, so I didn't order a sweet one like Sam. Yeah, so we have that contrast between yeah. the savory and the sweet juke, which is cool. The different Not types of Korean porridge. This is steaming. It's like piping hot. <laughs> First bite. Wow. You know what? It almost reminds me of like a risotto, but like a little bit more soupy. That is really nice. Yeah, I don't think you've ever had a savory juke before. I think you've only tried the sweet ones. Yeah, and so. I wasn't a huge fan of the sweet ones. They were okay, but I'm more of a savory person. So an instant hit. Mm. Yeah, this is really good. So do you taste the shrimp or like what, mm -hmm. are, what are you tasting? Yeah, I mean, it's just like a risotto, I mean you taste the rice, like a savory rice. It doesn't have a whole lot of spices, but it's just, it's nice. You taste the shrimp, you taste the vegetables. It's an instant hit! So Sam on the other hand, he already knew what he wanted to order before we came here. Yeah, I'm getting my favorite Korean porridge and that is a Dan Hopak Duke. So mm -hmm. basically that is Korean pumpkin porridge. And if you take a look down here, you can see that you know, it's, it's very orange. It's very, <laughs> very pumpkiny, and it has. It's made with the the glutinous rice. Yeah. So it's that has been really smashed, uh, like thoroughly. So you don't see the grains of the rice, unlike mm -hmm. yours. And I'm gonna try to find. It also has these enormous, giant rice balls. I don't know wow. if you can see those. Yeah, yeah, they're in there. So I think I actually grabbed three of them. You know what? It kind of looks like polenta at first glance. Yeah, it does kind of look like polenta. Though it tastes very different. It tastes very differently. Okay, so I've served myself up. Yeah. So I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go for a rice ball on the first bite. I'll just go for the for I guess the whole pack part, the pumpkin part. Mm -hmm. So yeah, one thing. <laughs> it is very hot when it's served, so yeah. you do want to really blow on it before you put it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's sweet, but not too sugary. Mm -hmm. It's got um, just very a, a natural sweetness. Yeah. You really taste the pumpkin. I mean, sure, it's made out of rice, but it's over. The overwhelming taste is definitely the pumpkin. Yeah. And, and yeah, and just it's so smooth. You put it in your mouth, and it just you don't even need to chew. It just yeah. goes down nice and slowly. And you know what? Even though this is like a get well food, and you usually eat it when you're sick. I think it's also just nice to eat it on a cooler day, like a cool fall day. You just want something yeah, warm. Yeah, it's a great like late fall, winter, yeah. winter type of food because it's served piping hot and mm -hmm. it'll definitely warm you up. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's dig in. So our juke also came with side dishes. We've got your kimchi, a classic. So I'm just going to add it to my porridge, mix it in. And huh. it also came with beef. And this is kind of like a really fibrous meat that I really like. So I'm also just gonna mix that in. Maybe some of this for spice. Wow, you're, you're going all out here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just for an extra kick, I think it'll be nice. Because I mean, this this is quite plain. It's like simple flavor. So if you want to kind of spice it up, you've got these little side dishes that you can just plop in. Mm-hmm. Magic. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just looking at the menu here and I'm kind of thinking what I'd like to have next time we come back. And they have a whole lot of variety yeah, here. Yeah, show us that menu. Okay, so you can get the, the porridge with crab meat, with shrimp. They have bulgogi beef. You can get it with mushrooms if you're vegetarian. There's like black sesame, mung bean, red bean, pine nut. All yes. kinds of seafood. So the, the, there's like tons of, of sweet and savory options. I know. 
And you know what? If what? you pay an extra 1,000 won, which is like less than a dollar, you get cheese. <laughs> you can get cheese and like add it in and let it melt. Then it would be more like risotto. <laughs> oh my gosh, we should have seen that earlier. Yeah. So do you feel healthy eating this? My health meter has moved up 10 points. Oh, no, I'm just kidding, that's, <laughs> that's really cheesy. But yeah, it, it is a healthy food. And I have a memory, like when I, when I got sick, when I used to work in, in Korea as, as an English teacher, um, my director came in and, and brought me juke as a kind of a get well. Aww. I guess kind of as a, as a gift or a gesture. It's like, oh, you, you've got to have this juke and it's going to make you feel better. That's so sweet. Yeah, it is a good memory that I have. So even though those bowls were massive, we managed to finish everything. Both of them. And yeah. I didn't even help you. Like I, I'm shocked because you've like become a fan of Duke like just suddenly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of impressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, and let's talk about the cost. Alright, so the price point, I've got the bill right here. So mm -hmm. it was 16,000 won, man yukchun won. And that's roughly just over 14 US dollars. Yeah. So you're looking at about $7 per person. Mm -hmm. and. Like throughout the menu, you can order all the different kinds of juke, more or less between seven thousand and nine thousand won. Yeah. So that's kind of the the rough price point. Oh, and I should point out too that we're eating at a place called Bon Juke, which is a very popular juke chain. You can find them all throughout Korea, and I highly recommend coming to this place. This is like they they really do an awesome juke. They do a, like an amazing Korean porridge. So if you're in Korea, check out Bon Juke, and yeah. Uh, we're stuffed, it's time to go uh, take a siesta. Bye bye So as you can probably tell from those intense sweat stains on Sam, we've had a pretty difficult day of sightseeing. Wanna tell us about it? Yeah, so originally we planned to visit a cafe at Bene and we went there and <laughs> it shut down. So yeah. I was like, oh gosh, that was annoying enough. And then we walked like several more blocks looking, and this was the big thing we wanted to do today. We wanted to go to a parrot cafe. Mm -hmm. One of those quirky cafes you find only in Seoul. And we go up there and it's closed. And I was like knocking on the door. And all I could hear is like parrots walking. And the dog barking is going. <laughs> Nobody around. So. Yeah, so instead we've decided to have lunch. Yes. And we've ordered a little bit of booze. Yeah, we've got some makori. And what we're focusing on today are Korean pancakes, or mm -hmm. also known as Korean pizza, and that is jeon. So we're ordering hamu pajeon, which is seafood uh, pajeon, seafood, basically green onion Korean pancakes. Yeah. And we're also ordering kimchi jeon, which is the kimchi pancakes, or the, basically the kimchi pizza. So we're just waiting for that to arrive. It's time to get boozy. Early in the morning, 11 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> So what's cool about South Korea is that there are a number of different alcohols that are matched to certain foods. So when you're having chicken, you typically have beer. And when you're having samgyeopsal or some other type of Korean barbecue, you typically have soju. But when you're having jeon, these pan Korean pancakes that we're having, the preferred drink is makgeolli. Mm. And it is a kind of a Korean rice wine that has a very milky consistency. If you take a look at it down yeah, here. Yeah, it looks white. It, yeah, it is. It's it's white and it's kind of got it's, it's got a bit of and chunkiness to it. It's clumpy. Is it's that clumpy. Normal? Yeah, that's that's how it's supposed to be. Okay. Well, have your first sip then. <sighs> Cheers. Yes. Gumbe. Cheers. It's been about four years since I've had this. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fantastic. The thing I really like about it right now is that it's chilled. So I mean, it's it's a bit refreshing. But this is this is uh, the kind of Korean alcohol that is a little bit sour in its taste, and uh, it's just it tastes wonderful at the moment. I have to say. So the first jeon has arrived, and this is the kimchi one. So let's have a look here. As you can see, it's a flat pancake. It's a flour-based pancake that's been fried in a pan with oil. And it also has chunks of the kimchi, which is the, the spicy fermented cabbage. So I'm gonna take a little piece with my chopsticks. And oh. we have a dip here. So this is soy, vinegar, and chili. And you can dip it in. Yeah, the, the dip goes so well with the jeon. Mm. You can't just eat it on its own. And it smells so good. How's that kimchi jeon? Mm. It's really nice. It's like a savory pancake with lots of spice. Really, really good. Mm. Mm. So nice. I love this stuff. 
So another really neat thing about Korea is that certain foods are often paired with certain activities. And when you're hiking a mountain and or if it's really rainy outside, that is the perfect time to come for jeon. That is like mm -hmm. when you go with friends and you go have a jeon and you have a makgeolli. So yeah, it's pretty cool because it has been raining a lot in Seoul lately. So but not today. Not today. today but I, I kind of feel like we're <laughs> we're making up for those other rainy days. Mm. All right. So I'm gonna di just dissect this here with my my chopsticks. Look at my first you bite. working those chopsticks. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> and this one has a has a massive piece of kimchi. You can see the kimchi right there. So you know it's gonna be good. Let's dip it in that sauce. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, out of all the juns, and I really like hamul pa jun, I still think I prefer kimchi jun to all of them. Like, this is just yeah. matches my taste perfectly. It's so nice because you get the spice from the kimchi, but then the spice from the sauce as well. Exactly. So it's like First thing I want to point out here is just how much better I feel now that I've had a little bit of food and drink in my belly. Like my mood has improved significantly. <laughs> I'm no longer really no has. longer a total curmudgeon. Anyways, now that I'm in a better mood, <laughs> I just remembered that with the makoli, um I mean, we're drinking it from the bottle. This is what you would find, like, say you go to a convenience or grocery store, you would buy it in the bottle like this. Mm -hmm. But when you're having, say, a more traditional or homemade prepared uh, makoli, it comes in a very special pot that is used to pour. And so that that's really cool. If you can if you can have that, that is definitely the most authentic way of having the alcohol. And also the way we're drinking it here, it's not out of cups. You drink it in these little bowls. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you roll with a makoli. Mm. Good stuff. Now let's have you trying that. Okay. Mm. You know, I actually remember not liking this very much when I tried it a few years ago. But it's not so bad. Like, I find it very light and it's a little bit fizzy. Yeah, normally it's, you don't like alcohol, alcohol yeah, that much. Yeah, it's almost like a girly sparkling wine. <laughs> You know what? I think all of that, that that wine drinking we did in South America mm. has maybe like rubbed off on you a bit. You yeah, no, it's good. And it complements the jun nicely because this is really spicy, so I kind of like the sweetness of this to, you know, soften the blow. So yeah, this is a good meal so far. Have a bit more of that jun. Yeah, Ooh. before Sam steals it. This is my favorite <laughs> one. So now the second jun has arrived, yeah. our pancake. Like we took, we demolished that kimchi jun, guys. It's gone. That did not last long. Like I'm thinking less than two to three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the, the second star of the meal here. Mm. And that is the hamul pa jun. Mm -hmm. And that is the seafood green onion pancake. And the hamul refers to the seafood. So I'm gonna find a piece of seafood right here so you can see. There's lots of octopus. Lots of octopus. I think this actually might be squid, the ojingo. Um, and so that is some of the hamul okay. and the pa. The pa part is right here and that is the, the green spring onion here, the scallion. Mm. So that is a, a very good combination and we're really looking forward to trying this. Dig in. I'm just going to dig right in. All right. The nice thing is that it kind of comes pre-sliced for you already into, yeah. into little squares. But I'm going to just uh, slice it up one more time so that I don't choke on it. <laughs> <laughs> Good because, idea. Because, Good plan. because the, the paw, the, the green onions can kind of get stuck on your throat if you take too big of a bite. Yeah, they're quite chewy. Yeah. So again, dip it into the sauce. Oh. Mmm. Wow. That's really good. Mmm. So. Again, this one is savory. It's a savory pancake, but it's not quite as spicy as the kimchi jeon but you have more ingredients like with the seafood and the green onions. So it's a nice, um, when you pair them together, it's a really nice combination. Okay, so now it's time for me to try the seafood one. So I'm not the biggest fan of seafood, so I'm just going for a little piece here. I always find seafood a little bit chewy, but I'm braving it for the video. There you go, I've got some kind of sea creature in there. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you're right. It's not as spicy as the other one. I think you prefer the kimchi jeon, right? I do, but you know what? It's not bad. 
It's growing on That's you. Not bad. I could eat this. Yeah. Growing on you like the makoli, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Seafood isn't as chewy as I was expecting, so that's a very good thing. Well, I would say that was a very delicious meal. There's nothing left. We, we, we took care of that with authority, guys. <laughs> Absolutely demolished that. Okay, once again. so let's talk about the price for the whole meal. Yeah, so in terms of the price, so the hamul pajan was uh, 10,000 won, man won. And the kimchi pajan, the kimchi pancake, was 8,000 won, uh, patsong. So basically, in total, you were looking at like 16 US dollars, so about eight, eight per person to have that, that glorious pancake feast. And uh, definitely if you're in Seoul or anywhere in Korea, you've got to try this. This is probably, probably one of my personal favorite foods in Korea, so I highly recommend it. So Seoul has some pretty unusual cafes and today we're going to be documenting one of those. We are heading to Dong Cafe, which is basically a poo cafe. <laughs> yes. This isn't a cat cafe, it's not a dog cafe, it's a cafe dedicated to poo in all its shapes and forms. So we're going to show you what that looks like. Sounds okay. right up our alley. Yeah. It's kind of hard to miss with the big swirls of poo, but there it is. Let's go. What are you wearing? It's my new cap. I mean, come on. It just looks like all the other ones I bought. Who just fell off of my head? <laughs> this one's a little green. Maybe I had McDonald's last night. So Sam, you taught here in Korea for a few years. Tell us a bit about the fascination with poo. Well, there really is a bit of a quirky fascination with poo in Korea, and it's hilarious. I remember one of the funniest assignments I did with my students was I basically gave them a blank comic book strip, and they had to create their own comic using English. And this one, Kid created uh, basically, basically it was a catastrophe related to poo. A guy went up to the top of a building, he took a crap, it landed on the street, caused a big accident, <laughs> and then there was a news agency coming out to report the incident. So, wow. Yeah, it was a very, very sophisticated poo story, I have to say. <laughs> I think I gave him an A for that one. <laughs> Order has arrived. Tell us a little bit about what we got. Well, take a look at this uh, this thing of beauty here. This is my uh, French vanilla cafe, Zala. and you can see the some wonderful the intricate art, art design there. <laughs> and down below again, this would be my dung waffle. This is uh, basically uh, a dung shaped waffle covered with poo sauce on top. <laughs> with or maybe chocolate. I, I hope but, it's chocolate or Nutella. You know, it's 50-50. We haven't With quite a banana. We haven't quite ascertained what it is. And you know what? The plate is pretty cool. This is basically a latrine or like a squat toilet. Look at that. Oh yeah, they've 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 got this down here at this cafe. Yeah, so we're uh, eating out of a toilet. Sounds nice. about right. Oh, and you know what? what? If you come here at lunchtime and you order pasta or something like that, they serve it in a toilet bowl. <laughs> Why didn't we get that? It's too early <laughs> in the day, I suppose. We're, we're here the, for breakfast. We were the first customers inside. So, I bet this is your first time trying a poo waffle. I think it might be. I think it might yeah. be. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Dung delicious. Oh, no, no, no. Poo-tastic. Fantastic. No, that is, I think it is a chocolate or Nutella sauce. It's, it is really good. We hope. We hope. <laughs> so what are you having to drink? Mm. So I ordered a mango lassi and it's actually really good. It almost tastes like the ones I was having in India when I was traveling there. So that's a really good compliment. Authentic, huh? Yeah, authentic. Nice and thick. Yes. Stop distracting me. The waffle is slowly disappearing, so I'm going to dig in while I still have a chance. Ooh, you're gonna get a little bit Ooh, of banana. Look in there. at that. It's like caramelized on top. 
There we go. Dungy goodness. Ooh. Poo waffle. Let's get that chocolate. So poo waffle reaction. You know what? It's really good. I can recommend this place. Come check out the poo cafe, guys. When in Seoul, why not? Okay, so we finished that fantastic meal, that poo-inspired meal. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the damage? All right, let's assess the damage. So if, as you see down here, it's 18,000 won, man palchon won, which as of today is 16 US dollars. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was a little bit pricey, but yeah. we are in, in on Insedong Street, which is yeah. a very touristy area of Seoul. Mm -hmm. And I thought the quality of, of the food and the drinks was fantastic. Yeah, also, plus you're paying for the experience. You really, really are. I mean, where else are you gonna go to a food cafe, guys? So, <laughs> yeah, I, I do recommend coming. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a very unique experience, that's for sure. That's <laughs> yeah. So we are going for something called uh, dongbang, yeah, which so it's is basically a poo-shaped pancake. Poo-shaped bread pancake. It's really hot, so I wonder if it's going to be chocolate or red bean paste. Mm, I still can't tell, but it's burning my mouth. <laughs> mm, okay. So that is a poo shaped pancake filled with chocolate. Freshly made. Yummy? Mm -hmm. We just had to have it after eating at the, at the poo cafe, you know? It was mandatory. <laughs>